recent survey has showed that 70% of couples say they argue more about money than anything else. And it did get us thinking today about whether financial equality is at the root of some of those rows. You know, is it right to stay in an unhappy relationship if one of you depends on the other financially. It's often a different, whoever it is, it's a difficult position, Janet, isn't it, to be financially dependent on it's somebody? It's one I've lived um, all my working life with because I don't think there's been a long-term relationship in my life where I haven't earned more than my partner and money is definitely a big reason for arguments. Um, and I think what's happened over the last decade that more women now are in my position and, you know, there are more women who are the breadwinners or earning a sizeable chunk. Yeah, it said, I think that the Office of National Statistics say in 2020, women out-earned male partners almost a quarter yes. of households. That's extraordinary. Mm. You yeah. couldn't have said that 20 no, no. years ago. So I've, I've kind of gone through the last... Uh, 20 years where it was unusual, my situation was unusual, to now it's like one in four uh, people are, are in, in my situation. I do think that along with women earning more, something has happened which is low male self-esteem. So men are more depressed now than they've ever been. And one of the reasons is this whole, uh, you know, men feel if they're earning most of the money, uh, to run the home, that they've got a role to play. And now I think a lot of men are lost. And I'm really aware of how tricky it is to navigate a relationship where you are the main earner. Well, I suppose it's difficult... You've got to be very careful, I presume, yeah. to not say, well, I'm paying for it, so I'll choose, oh, you or I'll decide to, where we're going on holiday because I'm paying for it. You have to develop a new language. Yeah. You've got the new language, the way that you're speaking to your partner about what what's going to be bought and you have to call everything our even mm. though you're paying for it it's ours and mm. you have to but even if secretly you might be cross about things you have to let it go mm. because but if I've... you don't let it go yeah i i always feel everything is ours so with Eamon and i our relationship and marriage um is that i've always worked mm. but when i had jack I didn't stop working completely, but I cut right back and it was great. And I had a lot of time at home and Eamon was really busy at that time. And he never, ever questioned me. Mm. You know, I had the credit card and things I could shop, but I felt it. And so I think a lot, sometimes even if your partner isn't saying, well, I'm bringing in the money, you're not. I felt it very keenly and I noticed that I didn't spend anything much on myself because that's, I felt it wasn't my money, which is stupid. That's so strange because I've been on both sides of it. Mm. So when I was married to Shane, it came to a point where his career had taken off and I could be stay-at-home mom and full-time housewife, which, can I just say, was the hardest job I've ever done yeah. in my life. But I loved every minute of it, actually. But I never felt that. I never felt guilty, actually. I thought this is fine and he was really happy with it and the boys had me full time and then obviously when we split up then I became you know I had my own career and I had my own money and I think when I married Ray he felt it very much I think it always really got to Ray that I was you know the main breadwinner and, and like you say you do have to be careful with what you say but I used to have to say to him because he'd go well you choose it because you're paying for it and mm. I'd go but it's our money we're now married we're a couple and yeah. what's mine is yours and you, yours is mine type of thing. I think there will be people Kelly you know um, women watching this particularly who because they have stayed at home and looked after the children and maybe taken a big gap and break in their career who do feel even if their partner's not making them feel like that they feel yeah. rather dependent have you ever been in that position i've been on both sides so i've been the breadwinner and i have been the dependent and i think it's about the vulnerability that mm. money brings into the situation when you're not the breadwinner and you feel you're reliant on somebody else, no matter the quality of that relationship, even if it's a great relationship and it is ours and it's all lovely, you still feel this sense of internal vulnerability where you feel like you have to ask for the things. Mm. And like you said, you went without things yeah. because you didn't want to ask because it was for yourself. So that sense of vulnerability is what I think women feel disempowered by. So when you are in that situation where, for me, when I was poorly 
and I was unable to work. So I was unable to provide for myself, even though I wanted to. I just went to my savings and I would rather have whittled down my savings than to feel like every time I wanted or needed something, I had to ask and it, it just depletes your self-esteem. Well, that must have been very hard to be unwell and then on top yeah. of being unwell, feel like that. Yeah. You were almost a burden. And also because I, I felt like it was, it was money that my, my grandfather, it was my inheritance. I knew how hard he'd worked for that. I knew he'd never taken a day off. He was part of the Windrush generation. So I felt really a sense of guilt for even touching it. But equally, my, you know, my parents were like, my dad was like, look, Grandad would be proud of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Grandad <laughs> yeah. would be proud of you because yeah. he knows the situation mm -hmm. that you're yeah. in and that's why he worked hard mm -hmm. so that you would then be in a position well, you were to doing have a what, choice. Yeah, doing what you needed yeah. to do for, for you and to, to get by. And the thing is, Janet, you know, finan financial um, or power, you know, it can be a form of control, which is where it yeah. gets oh, yeah. dangerous, isn't mm. it? Yeah, I think things like, for example, buying a car, buying a new car, you know, if you're the person who's earning the most money, you, you, inside is a voice saying, just have the car you want, but <laughs> just get the one you want, you know, yeah. and then you have to put on the smiley, consideratory face. <laughs> I'm a, I know you all think I'm a monster, but I have worked really hard at it. <laughs> we do a bit. We do a bit, think we do a monster, bit. but not completely. I'm just looking at our poll if my iPad would work. Oh, yes, here it is. Thank you. We asked you this same question. Can a relationship be equal if one of you earns more than the other? And 87% of you said yes, it yes, can be yes, equal. I think that's yeah. really, that's it's really, really good. good yeah. Lily says, my husband may earn more, but I'm the one who runs the house, looks after the children, walks the dog. I would say that balances everything yes, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here, here. Um, yeah, Sharon says, for years I'd been the breadwinner. It was never an issue, nor talked about between me and my husband. We are equal and we made joint decisions. Although, thank you very much for your comments. We'd love to hear from you. The Office of National Statistics did say that men were quite happy if their partner earned up to 40% of the household income. Yeah. OK, they were yeah. very happy at that level. But, and I quote, their distress level <laughs> increased sharply if their wives' wages increased beyond that point. Well, wow. they were fine up to a point <laughs> as long as it didn't overtake Crazy. theirs. <laughs> very interesting. Thank you very much for joining in with that. We'd love to hear from you. Love to have your comments. Wish I had time to read them all out, but sadly not.